Today we'll be discussing our top five favorite Saturday Night Live performers, and we'll be examining intermittent fasting. This is Doctor vs. Comedian. I'm Dr. Asif Doja, and this is the Doctor of Laughs. Not a real doctor. Ali Hassan. Every episode, I pick a topic for Ali from comedy and entertainment and question him about it. Then Ali picks a topic from medicine and health and grills me on that topic. Today, in honor of the upcoming season finale of the 46th season of Saturday Night Live, we'll talk about our top five favorite performers from that show. Then we'll be discussing intermittent fasting for weight loss and for other medical problems. But first, before we get started, Ali, I want to ask you a question. Have you been watching SNL these past few weeks? Because I'm just thinking Keegan-Michael Kay was on last week, and the week before, somewhat controversial, Elon Musk, your best friend, was on. Yeah, I don't know why he's my best friend. I do want to take a Tesla for a test drive. That's where our <laughs> yeah. friendship ends. I don't think he's going to be there for the test drive, mm, but... I think you may be calling him my best friend because I think I asked you at one point, what is the controversy about? And you're mm -hmm. like, well, well, let's talk about it on this show. So let's do that. What is the big... Con Look, man, I I can't understand how people are more upset at Elon Musk than they were at Donald Trump and, yeah. and his involvement exactly. there. You know, after Donald Trump, you had, you had Aziz Ansari, you had um, Dave Chappelle, you had guests being... I, I, I don't know if this is the right word, but they were like prolific hosts these people were like scared for the future of black people and brown people and the future of america and they were like you know i remember dave Chappelle said we're going to give you a chance but you give us a chance too and then that yeah, never that happened didn't, yeah. that didn't go as yeah bright. i don't really so to be honest with you i don't pay a lot of attention to elon musk i honestly don't follow him other than like when the tesla that new truck came out which has all these right angles to it i don't know if you've seen a picture of that it's like insane and people were scooping up pre-orders like uh it, uh it was nothing so anyway mm -hmm. uh people are upset at elon musk for various reasons uh he uh, spread covid misinformation i guess last year he apparently donated fake ventilators to hospitals uh and no is that true <laughs> it, it was true I'll, I'll i'll link uh i'll post a link to uh a good article on slate that kind of talks about a his controversy and b his hosting of snl and uh he I guess forced Tesla workers to go back to work during the COVID pandemic, which resulted in 450 employees becoming infected. Uh, and uh, so, and he's, you know, he's, he is like, I mean, I'm not excusing his behavior. He's like most people who own multi-million and billion dollar companies. They don't care about the average worker. They care about their profits, you know? Um, and so he's definitely been against unionization uh, and has opposed kind of the working man. So I, I think that is the reason why a lot of people, especially left-leaning people don't like Elon Musk. Sure. And I think that's legitimate. I think all of that is legitimate. Um, some people just don't like, like, when, when are we going to have these, like, rich, uh, stop having these rich billionaires and uh, multimillionaires? But, I mean, man, a lot of people who are, who've come out of SNL are multimillionaires right now, too. Like, <laughs> exactly. Hate these people. Exactly. For the money. Like, you know how much money Eddie Murphy and Chris Rock and Dan Aykroyd have right now? It's like, Bananas, and so know? Elon Musk is an interesting Adam guy. Sandler. There you go. There you go. Um, Elon Musk is an interesting guy, of course, because he uh, is South African, but then he's also half Canadian. So he used that Canadian right. heritage to move to Canada and he went to Queen's University. I don't know if you knew that. He moved to Queen's University before, then after two years, uh, moved to I the States. Teach... Oh, right. You teach at Queen's University. Yeah. I teach uh, at Queen's. Right. And so, and so for that reason, I am obliged to know that information. I did. Well, there you go. Did you really know that? Are you serious? I knew that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not because I taught at Queens, but I did know that. Yeah. I was trying to make a joke like you have to pass a test. Yeah. Well, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if they made you do that. Name uh, five famous people who went to Queens. 
Yeah. So, Shots but shots fired at Queens <laughs> University. So anyway, he he then he he actually said he the reason whole reason he went and came to Canada because uh, you can use he used his mother's Canadian citizenship to get citizenship and come to because he thought it'd be easier to get to the U.S. that way. So and then he went to University of Pennsylvania afterwards. Anyway, other Canadian connection, of course, he's married to. I cannot remember. Uh, Grimes. I cannot remember. Grimes. The. The, That's the, right. The I can only artist. picture the lettering of their child. I yeah. About so the That's lettering right, of, of their child. I mean, whatever. I, you know, whatever. I yeah. I don't. I certainly don't hate him for that. I. You can name your kids whatever you want. They're the ones who will be teased later on. So, right. but I guess when you're a billionaire child, uh, it probably doesn't really matter about. I teasing. mean, a punch to the face still hurts, no matter how much money your dad <laughs> has. No. So, um, anyway, getting back to the whole hosting thing. What did you think about uh, his? I don't think hosting? you're going to like it. Speaking of controversy, I thought it was decent. I thought it yeah. was better than average. And actually, I watched uh, Keegan Michael Key the next week. Thought it was worse than Elon Musk. <laughs> wow, that's harsh. Well, I have zero expectations of Elon Musk. Yeah. And I know they use the mother card a little bit and that pulled some heartstrings and whatever, you know. Not not that I'm like gonna be in tears because he has his mother on, but they use the Mother's Day theme and as they should. It's Mother's Day for God's sake. But I have high expectations for Keegan Keegan Michael Keat. I have high expectations of his masterful entertainer. And that was a mm-hmm. pretty mm-hmm. drab, mediocre mm-hmm. monologue. I, I would challenge somebody to tell me they were amused by that monologue. So yeah. I had whatever thoughts I did about Elon, but then when I saw Keegan Michael Key, I was like, let me go back and, and bump Elon Musk to a six on ten. Well, this I think is all I agree with you. It's all about expectations. And my wife and I, when we were watching us, and I were like, "Wow, he's not that bad." And some of the kind of characters he did, and some of the accents were pretty good. Like they were. And I was looking on Twitter at the time and people were reaching. They were reaching because they want to hate right. him. And I understand yeah. that. I understand that. I understand. I have had hatred for certain, you know, rich, awful, evil men. And like, no matter what they say, I have a filter and it switches it to something bad. But yeah, I mean, if you don't think, if you have no opinion of Elon Musk, you wouldn't be like, this is awful to mm-hmm. Saturday, his Saturday Yeah, Night no, Live. I've definitely seen worse. Trump was way worse. And I think... The, Wayne Gretzky was worse. Well, Wayne, I totally remembered Wayne Gretzky. That was one of the worst It was ever. so bad. I mean, Wayne Gretzky is, you know, the greatest, of course, but oh my God, it was so Second bad. Second greatest after Mario Lemieux, but that's a whole other conversation. Like, but yeah, he shouldn't be... Again, our expectations should have been in the dirt for right. Wayne Gretzky. And somehow he was still lower than our expectations. <laughs> so, so Elon Musk, um, the bottom line is, I actually liked it too. And I think I liked it because, you know, here's a guy with Asperger's and... You know, a lot of people have Asperger's and you can't actually tell uh, because, you know, they, they are a- still able to interact with the world uh, in a quote unquote neurotypical fashion. Um, but I saw Elon Musk. Actually, I've never heard him speak before. That's how little I pay attention to Elon Musk and Tesla. I had never heard him speak before. And I heard him speak. I'm like, oh, he reminds me so much of the patients I have with Asperger's and, and autism. Uh, it, it's crazy. He reminded me specifically of one patient he acts exactly like him. And I thought, wow, you know what? Like if, you know, putting aside all the controversy, even if we have some kids who can see, you know, uh, I have Asperger's syndrome, I have autism, and it's sometimes difficult for me on a daily basis, you know, to have to interact with neurotypical people. Uh, and just to ha- kind of have that example, this guy reached, you know, the, the heights of uh, hosting Saturday Night Live. I don't know. I mean, I, I think it's... <laughs> well, he yeah. also reached the heights of business success before he reached the <laughs> right. heights of SNL. And that's how I he mean, got really- to... <laughs> Right, but if we're trying to inspire children, it might be the uh, the ownership of Tesla and the other, uh, you know. Well, I, you know, there are lots of, in, there's in lots the, of high-tech billionaires who have autism or Asperger's. I think that's kind of been well-established. But yeah. I think the fact that he's re- reaching out probably a- away from his comfort zone. I don't know. I, I just, I would give him some credit for that. But uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, SNL, surprising us as always. So I wanted to ask you about SNL. Now, I know you and I uh, have 
watch this for a long period of time. Not necessarily together, but I remember even when we were like 10 or 11 years old chatting about it and things like that. And uh, in fact, I remember, you probably don't remember this, we were playing Smurfs one time when you came to visit me. This is so weird because the Smurfs is like for little kids. And then we talk about SNL, which was kind of an adult show. And then you would reenact with our Smurfs, like the Eddie Murphy, like... I don't know, one of his, like, mo- right? yeah. a monologue or one of his skits, you know, from, uh, uh, like, Mr. Robinson's Neighborhood or something That's like hilarious. that. So, anyway, I, I, I do remember that. So, I know he's been a part of both of our lives. You know, when yeah. I was, um, I can remember, like, staying up and watching it with my sister when I was probably 10, you know, 10 or 11, staying up watching uh, uh, SNL and just, we just found it so funny. And the, and the characters uh, just, they just, you know, burned in my mind. So I, I watched it regularly up until probably I, I uh, left university and went to medical school. So uh, it definitely is a special place for all of us. And, you know, we, we it's kind of one of the things we stick with, right? You know, even through the good times, the bad times, the lame casts, and then it kind of sure. builds up again. You have your new favorites, then it kind of builds up again. And I, I think it's doing very well now. I think I think some of the people on it are just amazing. But I don't know. What, what, what are your kind of memories and thoughts of SNL? I mean, you know, as a stand-up comic, I'm not home on Saturdays mm-hmm. typically, right? So there's been a lot of miss... I, I made it a point to stay home for Dave Chappelle mm-hmm. in 2016. Yeah. I made... I, I Or 2017, I should say, right before Trump came in. I made it a point to watch Aziz Ansari, right? But otherwise, I miss it. And then you know how fast entertainment moves. It's like... You're like, I got to watch it. I got to find it. I got to find it. I got to go to NBC.com. And then they go, oh, your your region is geo-blocked or not available. <laughs> and you're, oh, no, I got to find it. And by like Monday afternoon, you're like, eh, I'll live if I don't find it, you know? So that's just sort of been the, the pattern. I think that I'm going to watch it. Then I remember, oh, I'm not going to be home. And then I'm like, oh, but I have to watch it afterwards. I got to see how they mm-hmm. do and you realize life goes on if you don't watch it, you know, you're not, a, you're not a kid anymore where it was like, you know, you must see TV and it's like, you don't want to be left out on conversations. But when I was a kid, when I was 10, my dad was sending me upstairs. He was like, you got to You can't watch this. You can't watch this, which made me want to watch it even more. Yeah. There's that kind of forbidden aspect about it. So, yeah. so this uh, weekend is the season finale of the 46th season. So I thought what would be fun is if I would ask you, and if you would like to ask me, that's okay too, about our favorite, okay. uh, our top five favorite SNL performers. They call them SNL players, but, you know, let's yeah. just call them performers. Uh, what do you think about that? Yeah, I'm into it. And, uh, you know, you had emailed me about this and I found it, tougher to narrow it down to five than I thought Mm -hmm. I would, right? So first I go, oh yeah, here are the five in my mind immediately. But then I I looked at a list of the cast members Mm -hmm. over the years. Me too. No, this guy has to, no, Mm -hmm. this person has to, no, this lady's got to be, you know what I mean? So it is not easy and like literally by tomorrow I'll be like, oh, I should have said this Mm -hmm. and I'll regret Mm -hmm. these answers to some degree. Mm -hmm. But the way I did it, my marker um, is... Who have made me laugh the most okay. over the years? Okay, that's that's an intro. I was kind of more like, I don't know who I had the most fond memories of. Uh, a bit who went on to other things, but I I don't know if that's always the best barometer for SNL specifically. Uh, yeah. So it just just who I had the most fond memories of is for me. So which I, I think may be similar to yours. But what, well, why don't we get started? So do you yeah, have? Do you want to go in a ascending or descending order let's or something? St- start at the let's bottom start. and go to our number ones. Uh, we can yeah. each take turns. And do you have any honorable mentions? Because I have one. You could probably guess I had one. Okay, so I don't actually have an honorable mention. I have a tied for first place. I have two people oh, okay. tied for first. So we both cheated, but that's okay. Okay. <laughs> so m- m- my honorable mention is Tina Fey. And okay. it's, it's kind of a, a strange pick because Tina Fey, she ha- was in a, a few sketches and some that are very funny. If you ever find the key party sketch on... Uh, uh, it's a hilarious sketch, um, one of my favorites, uh, and she plays a role in that. But it was really Weekend Update. I mean, I love Dennis Miller. Uh, I think Dennis Miller kind of has morphed into a, you know, 
bit of a yeah right wing you know, nutbag yeah. sure <laughs> but but I think when uh, when Tina Fey was hosting a Weekend Update that really solidified Weekend Update for me is like this is it this is what you need to watch uh, this is one of the cornerstones of the entire show and I think uh, her and Amy Poehler uh, hosting it was was great and then yeah. finally you know she was the head writer from ninety nine to. 2006 uh so a long time and i think I, I give her credit for that being one of the head writers absolutely you know, for, absolutely so no, she fine. deserves every success she's gotten and she's i thought the 30 rock was a piece of genius mm -hmm, pretty much mm -hmm. every single episode mm -hmm. uh but she did not make my list because that's because i'm going based on people who made me yeah. laugh she made me laugh a ton on 30 Rock. Yeah, no, she's, she's, uh, she's less great. so on SNL because it was yeah. the news, and I'm not usually laughing that much at the news. And for me, Kevin Nealon and Norm McDonald still. Oh, yeah. Norm McDonald, of course. He's, you bring up yeah. somebody, I'm like, oh, of course. Okay. See? Yeah, we're going to regret it. So, what's your number five then? So, I would say number five. You may think this is odd. You may not have even thought of this guy, but I had to really de dig deep down who made me laugh. And Dana Carvey. Mm -hmm. Made me laugh a lot, man. Hans and Franz, the church lady. Like, there's some really, this, like, sketches that I don't even know how many times me and my buddy said, I want to pump you up, mm -hmm. like, hundreds mm -hmm. of times to each other till it was, like, sickening to people around us who didn't know the show. So I'm going to go with Dana Carvey at number five. That's great. I won't comment because he may make an appearance later on in my list. Oh! And, and okay. I'll preface my actual list by saying that obviously, just like everything we talk about on this podcast, it's influenced by when we grew up. And and course, obviously, as you, you mentioned, you kind of fell away from SNL as of late just because you're busy with other things. And uh, though that, but the time period where I watched it the most, which is kind of uh, middle school, high school, uh, beginning of university, I mean, that was burned into my brain. So my number five is actually Martin Short. Uh, oh, because I see, love, <laughs> see, why the hell wouldn't I have Martin Short? I, I, I love, I just his characters, Ed Grimley. I loved, uh, there when he did Jackie Rogers Jr. <laughs> Do you remember the synchronized swimming sketch he did with Christopher That's Guest? I mean, that is one, one of the, the best, best sketches. Uh, and and so they he, were so deep in character, you're just like, what am I watching here? Because we hadn't seen mockumentary style right. stuff, you know. Right. I, I don't know if that came out after I had seen Spinal Tap or before, yeah. but even if it came out after it, like it was still, it, it's kind of in a class of its own. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. God, I know it's amazing. So how many years do you think Martin Short was on SNL for? Oh, it was short, man. It was like two years or something. One it was, year. It was only it was one. one. That's year. right. And he said that. I think him. let's do another episode maybe talking about SNL and the development of SNL because there was this time period where Lauren Michaels left and Dick Ebersol took over. And this was the season. But this was the first season my sister and I watched every every episode. So right. those sketches are so burned in my brain. So Martin Shore is my number five. Oh, nice. Nice. Okay. My number four, and this is a tough one, but... This is, you know, laughter and just pure, pure talent and God-given skill. It's Phil Hartman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Love that guy. Love that guy. I mean, he could just do everything. That's what people don't quite get about Phil Hartman. He could just yeah. do every type of character. Uh, it, really, it's, it's a, a, amazing. And his ability to maintain a straight face through some crazy, crazy stuff that he was seeing and being greeted with. Like, sure. I think people, like, at that level, these, some of these guys are like, my job today is to make Phil Hartman laugh on national mm -hmm, television. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm doing. And he was like, no, not me. You're not going to get me. He was phenomenal. My uh, number four is Kristen Wiig. Uh, yeah. I think she, you know, I think when she was at the height of her popularity, she was the star of the show. Uh, oh, absolutely. And, and, and I think that says a lot because I would, you know, there were people you tune into, which which is some of the people we're going to be talking about probably later in our list. Like they are the reason you're tuning into Saturday Night Live. Of course. And, yeah. But she was that for so long. We have the same list. So, so many good characters. <laughs> I think, uh, and, and she's gone on to such a great Hollywood career. Uh, I, I think. Uh, it, it was it, she was probably the first female who anchored the show uh, from a uh, acting point of view, not from a head writer point of view, from an acting point of view. So yeah, I, I say agree. her. And that is why she is my number mm -hmm. three. Yeah. Yeah. And For all the same reasons you listed, but just yeah. absolutely hysterical woman. Like, and, uh, just fell in love with her. I literally had a massive, massive crush. 
No, she is. She's amazing. And we, it's, it, we show our kids like all the skits, you know, that she's been in because uh, they're just so funny. OK, so uh, my number three is Will Ferrell. Again, a guy who uh, he kind of just emerged from that group, right, in the in the 2000s. And then he became the guy you wanted to see in every single sketch and, and how he just would take things to another level again. And you can see just like Kristen Wiig, how that followed their trajectory in, in Hollywood, right? And when they make movies around them, they just are so charismatic, so funny. And Will Ferrell just taking sketches to the nth degree, uh, yeah. you know, a classic, of course, is more cowbell. <laughs> right like it's um so good. you know so i, I think uh, uh will ferrell's my number three okay my number two is eddie murphy and again it's it's martin short-esque in the sense that some of those sketches will just never leave my brain and and you know when you read about it this guy was like 18 years old and just mm-hmm. kind of shoved on stage like go do something and he he pulled off some pretty impressive stuff in people who were in a different league altogether and then grew into his really into his own. And I bet you I'll be very surprised to hear that Eddie Murphy also was only on there for like two or three yeah, years. I think I it was super three short. or four years, but the okay. last one was 84, which was Martin Short's year. And yeah. he basically he, they just would show clips, you know, uh, they, they were, he wasn't uh, contracted to be on the show. So yeah. I, he is my number two as well is Eddie yeah. Murphy the 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 for that short amount of time for the amount of influence he had and again tuning in just to watch him and did he ever have a bad sketch and probably you know so many good sketches we talked about Mr. Robinson's Neighborhood James Brown but you know the other one which was another filmed piece which is one of the best film pieces is the Mr. White uh, right where he dresses up mm-hmm. as a white person and walks yeah. around and see how people treat him differently. Yes, I yes, mean, yes, it yes. is. It, right. it was so great, so ahead of its time. So, yep, my number two also Eddie Murphy. So now this is very exciting. Drum well, I, I I think I know your number one. I know your number one. You if you remember, I told you unless you have some stupid Chris Kattan number one because <laughs> you're trying to zig when the rest of the world zags. I think I know your number one because my tie at number one, mm-hmm. as I told you. Mm-hmm. It is Chris Farley and Will Ferrell because mm-hmm. nobody made me laugh more than yeah. those guys, yeah. man. Well, nobody. why don't you talk, talk a bit about Chris Farley? I think he's such a comedic genius who kind of left us too soon. Yeah, no, absolutely. He's, um, he. I mean, people who were in his presence, I think Will Ferrell to some degree, yeah, but, but Chris Farley, like people gravitated to him because of his, uh, please let me just be around your your presence, your skill, your incredible charisma, everything. Like he had an incredibly magnetic personality. And, um, you know, he, like, I, I grew up uh, having watched John Belushi mm-hmm. and I love John Belushi mm-hmm. and I thought he was very funny, but he was sort of left in the dust a little bit. Mm-hmm. The Chippendale sketch, I mean, the bravery required. And unfortunately, the more you know about Chris Farley you and you learn about him harboring so much uh, insecurity uh, and, 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 you know, self-deprecation, all this kind of stuff. You, you get a little bit sad, but that doesn't take away from uh, the van down by the river and the, mm-hmm. the Chippendale sketch mm-hmm. and so many different uh, everything. He just gave it so much more of himself. He gave every single ounce of himself to every single sketch. He's really the best. So this was a tough one. And so you actually, Chris Farley is not on my list. Uh, what? So- no! What? And so people are surprised at that. And the reason is, I don't think... I love how you say people are surprised at that. Like, there's a bunch of people who've already written in They've to already you tweeted like, me. This is an outrage. It's, it's weird because it's pre-recorded. What do you but... mean? What do you mean Sherry O'Terry is your number one? So We won't tolerate it. You know, I was thinking, okay, I got to put Chris Farley. I got to put Sandler. I got to put David Spade. But and oh, I think God, David Spade almost for the Hollywood Minute, but none of these guys are, are the number one person, and it's because mm. um, I don't think that they were given enough sketches back in the day. To be honest sure. with you, yeah. the the, quant- the quantity they had, the quality was amazing. The quantity was not. They were almost like featured players, so they'd be in a couple of things, but they didn't. They were not in the same amount as Phil Hartman was. Okay, and, so know, can I? Oh, and so your Phil Hartman is your number no. one. Oh, okay. So wait, let me guess here. Let me give me three guesses well, here. This it was is crazy. they're on your list, and I said we're going to talk oh. about them later. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. You said we may talk about them later. Okay. Okay, All right. yes. So it is uh, Dana Carvey. And it's for the same reasons you said. First of all, he I probably have the fondest memories of him. And just this sheer amount of you said of characters that he had and yeah. the different roles he could play in, in different sketches. And even when there's a one-off, like you remember Chopping Broccoli? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, Chopping Bro. <laughs> it's, it's he did i think he did that once i don't think he did it again um I don't know, yeah. and and but that sketch stays in your mind for years and years it's a one it's not even a character but okay as a doctor of the brain this is where it's your time to shine yes. you know we are going to talk about the subject down the line about how your music from your teens like i still know every word to that Frankie Goes to Hollywood song, Power of Love. That's a long song. I know every <laughs> single word. I know every single word to Bruce Springsteen's Thunder Road. These are like long-ass songs. It's crazy how many words I crammed it. You ask me to remember just the name of a band these days. Oh, yeah. And that's tough. I'm constantly asking my dog, who does this? Who sings this again? Who's this? Again? And I know my kids are probably like, if you don't care, why are you asking? It's like, I know it's not that I don't care. I just... It's, it's not going in. It will not go in. So I wonder if it's the same thing with these sketches and all this stuff. And 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 also, let's not discount the fact that we only had a handful of TV channels. We didn't exactly. have the internet. We we had less going in our brain on a regular basis. So what was going in was making an impact. Also, our brains were young and tender. I don't know. Absolutely. And we should do that. We should talk about that more in another episode. But yeah, it's it's, it's even just a, a quantity type thing because now we have to remember 40-something years of life, right? So things will you know fall out of your brain. Whereas back then, you only had to remember 15, 16, 17, 18 years of life, right? So yeah. all these things are ingrained. But we could talk, talk a bit about that in the future on maybe another episode about how these things get kind of get burnt into your brain at certain ages yeah and i think you know that's you hear this very often about snl you hear people be like that show hasn't been funny in ages the fact of the matter is it wouldn't be on television anymore exactly. if it hasn't been funny in years or decades or whatever it hasn't been funny to you mm -hmm. but it's funny to somebody and somebody's young mushy brain is eating this stuff mm -hmm, up and mm -hmm. they're liking it and and, uh, and other people you know there's something to be said about people's tolerance they're like oh they missed this time but they'll get it next week you know some people are like where other people are like every sketch must be the best right now every single time i watch so. just like for you it's chris farley for me it's Dan and dana carvey just like those guys are what we think about there are many many people who think of the lonely island and the lonely island is snl of course right? yeah that's and just the way it works Andy Sandberg is fantastic yeah. Anyway, yeah but yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and so yeah i i i think i think it's it's ever evolving and there's always going to be a period of time that it's going to be someone's favorite Uh, Asif, I don't know if I wished you a happy Ramadan. Did I wish you a happy Ramadan? Yes, happy Ramadan, Eid Mubarak to you. Uh, it's past. It's yes, over, it was. It was. Way, it was know. actually last week. By the time we're taping this, and in case for those of uh, people who uh, aren't Muslim who listen to the podcast, uh, you probably find it confusing to wish someone Eid Mubarak uh, because you never know what day it's going to be. You're like, is it this day? Is it this day? And just so you know, it changes all the time because it goes by the lunar calendar. And we don't even know. We don't even know till like a couple days before. You're like, well, is it Wednesday? Is it Thursday? My parents just stay up till midnight on or like from Wednesday to Thursday so they could just send a, a text message to everybody they know saying Eid Mubarak because they couldn't remember which one, which day it was supposed to be. It's, it's very confusing. A lunar calendar isn't ideal. I'll just say that. Also, you know what may confuse you is the fact that Asif says Muslims as, as though he's pronouncing the word musk. Uh, and I say Muslims. Other people say Muslims. That's really not done anymore. But feel free to go uh, Asif's way uh, if you like. But really, Muslims is... Uh, is just fine. I think, you know, we've talked a lot about pronunciation on this show. You can probably tell I don't pronounce things properly. I called the uh, host of SNL from last week, Keegan Michael K. So I'm pretty bad at this. Yeah. yeah. You had a friend named Raj for many, many years who you called Raj as though it was spelt with a Z-H-H -H or something. And none of us understood. 
Anyway, he's a patient friend. He never corrected you. Anyway, happy Ramadan. And by the way, uh, if you want to wish somebody a good Ramadan, Ramadan Kareem is the greeting. So, you know, that way you don't have to guess if it's Eid or not. Now, the subject of Ramadan all the time, uh, you know, that's on everybody's mind, especially when they're Muslim or they're Muslim adjacent, if you will, is fasting. Mm -hmm. Um, Some of us, I don't want to brag, but some of us have been fasting throughout the year. Mm-hmm. Intermittent fasting, <laughs> but but just to stay on Ramadan for a second, it's it's interesting to watch. Uh, I was in Saudi Arabia for an Eid once, and I will never forget. I mean, that was, you know, in one night, the way that the Saudis ate was was should should have been like an annual festival. Mm-hmm. You know, lambs on spits and hundreds of different dishes. And just like, that was just some Tuesday. That was just a Tuesday (laughs) in Ramadan. And they did that every single night. So you can imagine, you know, it it is important to make those right choices to make fasting healthy. And fasting can be healthy. Not for me. I would probably uh, 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 punch a senior citizen out of anger. I, I can't go long periods of time without food. Um, at least I, 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 it hasn't been successful in the past, but, um, the thoughts are that fasting, if, if, uh, you know, spiritually healthy and can be physically healthy. What are your thoughts on that? So I will uh, answer that question one second, but I have this great story about, uh, eating a huge meal in Saudi Arabia, which I have to tell you because I don't know when I'll ever tell this story again. So I used to live in Saudi Arabia. I know your dad used to live in Saudi Arabia. That's why you went to go visit him there. And that's how you've been. Uh, so I lived there for, for three years, uh, when I was a kid. Uh, and then my on a compound on a compound. So Uh, a compound with other North Americans. Uh, uh, and, uh, then my dad went back, uh, uh, there in the early two thousands and lived there as well. So I didn't visit him there, but I visited, we went to other places in the middle East to kind of uh, connect when he was there. Anyway, when he was in, um, Saudi Arabia the first time he was invited to this huge feast. So, uh, I, I believe it was for Eid. I'm not sure. I'll, I'll have to confirm that with my dad. So we went and this is not, it is going to sound like I'm telling you a racist story, but this is exactly what it was. Okay. So this is how the chef would prepare everything for the big feast. They take a bunch of eggs, hard boil, a bunch of eggs, take off the shells. Okay. So you have like 24 eggs maybe, or, you know, a, a dozen or two dozen eggs. Then You stuff those eggs inside a cooked whole chicken. So you uh, cook the chicken, take out the insides, stuff that with with these hard-boiled eggs. Mm. Then you take about four or five of these chicken stuffed with eggs and you stuff them into a lamb. Okay? Yeah. Cooked yeah, yeah. lamb. It's the Saudi Arabian turducken, basically, is what and we're talking about. And then you no. take the lamb and yes. you put it into a camel. And I know it sounds like I'm making it up, but it's true. And that was like a huge special occasion feast. I'm a, I'm confused about where the racism comes in. Well, I think people might say, oh, you're being so racist by saying that like people from Saudi Arabia eat camel. And I'm not actually sure how much they ate of the camel. It was more just, you know, for the display. But, um, you know, whatever. I'm just telling you there was the camel too. Yeah, I don't think anyone would find that to be remotely racist. What is your what is your problem? I'm the guy who works with the national broadcaster, and I don't even, I would say that story to the the entire country on national radio. I might just repeat it. You know, anyway. whether the eating during Ramadan is healthy or not, it kind of goes into this question about intermittent fasting, right? Because it's not eating for certain periods of time during the day. And, and again, you know, just so everyone knows during Ramadan, it's like you don't eat for the whole month. You uh, don't eat from sunrise to sundown. Okay, okay. So, so you you think our listeners are pretty stupid? Basically, I just basically. want to make sure we're all on the same page here. So, uh, but this idea of intermittent fasting has been very popular in the press and in some scientific literature. So, um, I don't know. Have you? I've tried intermittent fasting. In fact, I think I tried it because one of our friends told us okay. about it. Okay. First of all, if you were beside me, I would punch you in the throat right now. That's what I would do. Because I was intermittent fasting, and that's one of the many times that you rolled your eyes at me. Okay? 
when I did low gluten, when I was plant-based, when I was intermittent fasting, all these things. Okay, we'll get to those. We'll, we're going to, oh, the hate mail you're going to get when we finally discuss those topics. I'm going to love it. I am going to love it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read that hate mail on this show. All right. So you have tried intermittent fasting and you lost a bit of weight and then you stopped intermittent fasting. And did you put on all no i i didn't i didn't i didn't hardly did it uh it was actually because uh i was so i tried intermittent fasting uh for so i was working out a lot and then the weeks where i'd be on call at the hospital so i kind of do it a week at a time it was really hard for me to get workouts in so i thought well maybe there's another way i can kind of go about trying to you know uh do something to, to compensate for that so i wouldn't eat and i was doing this um, there's different forms of intermittent fasting, but I think I, I did the 16 to eight, which is the one that one of our friends, not you, uh, okay. our friend Q told me about. So, uh, it's basically you, uh, eat for a certain period of time. And then after 8 PM, I wouldn't eat again till noon. And so, uh, I actually found it relatively easy easy to do the only thing that i needed to make sure i had with me was like a tiny snack like a granola bar or something in uh just with me on my in my bag that i take around the hospital just in case you know because if at noon i was in the middle of something i didn't have time to go eat lunch or whatever i just wanted to make sure i could just scarf something down so uh mm. but th that was shove something unhealthy into your face granola after 16 hours of doing fine. it I don't uh -huh. anyway so um, I did it. I didn't find it that hard to do, but I didn't do it for long enough to see any effects. Well, how about you? How long did you do it for? Did you? Uh, anytime I've done it, and my wife is is quite a quite a, an advocate. Uh, I see the, the 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 difference in her immediately. For me, it's like um, the weight loss comes eventually, but it's really about the energy. It's really about the energy, and and I know you're the doctor here, buddy. But there's a a, a Harvard. Um, a Harvard aging expert named David Sinclair. And, you know, this is some of the wisdom on aging that if you skip a meal, just eat less, lower your calories. In general, we're eating way more than we need to. You skip one meal a day. Right. Um, this is a way to, you know, I don't know. I don't think he says reverse aging, but, you know, stall the aging process well, at the very least. There is some evidence for that. So intermittent fasting actually makes sense if you think about it. So basically what happens is, uh, your body kind of goes into a semi-starvation mode, okay? Insulin levels in your body will go down during this time, and then we will start to use the fat that's stored in our cells as energy. So that's how we could lose weight. If we let our insulin levels drift down, then our body says, oh, we need something for energy. So then we use the fat stores. So that's basically Okay, how so let me, how is that different for when, when people do this sort of like, uh, starvation diets and 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 the, the the conventional wisdom is that oh what happens is that your body holds on to fat uh, worried that it doesn't know when it'll get its next meal again why does that not happen in intermittent yeah, fasting yeah and and that's that I, that's not really true in terms of what happens and we talked a bit about fat utilization on our ketogenic diet episode so Wait, are you trying to tell me there's not little men that live in our body that hold on to fat with their, uh, with their <laughs> that, that, we, fists there's clenched? not there's not ah. so um the danger is unless you're um following these uh types of protocols this kind of starvation your body will also use other sources of energy so not just fat they'll use muscle as well and that's mm -hmm. the problem is you start to break down your muscle. So that's the concern about that. In fact, we'll get to that a bit later with some of the concerns about intermittent fasting and some of the studies that have been done. So basically, that's kind of the idea behind inter intermittent fasting. And there is some basic science, which I think is what you were getting at with how fasting can reverse aging. There's quite a bit of when we say basic science, we talk about laboratory stuff looking at cells, looking at mice, uh, and uh, things like that. And there's a great article which we'll link to in the New England Journal of Medicine, which is, you know, Ali, it's the the premier medical journal. So this isn't it's, it's like the Archie's double digest of the comic books is what I've always I think, called it. Uh, I think you're onto something there. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, it's in a lot of bathrooms. Yeah. That's what I mean. You go into a doctor's bathroom and there it is. It's like good bathroom. Reading. So it, it, it is, it is the premier medical journal. So, you know, they have a very good review. Uh, it's pretty technical, uh, just, but it's, it's worth reading if you're interested about all these, all the evidence that, um, 
how fasting helps the cells in your body basically now when i say your body they actually mean mice so it's ah. the question is how do you extrapolate that to to humans right so people are tried to do this and that's what these intermittent fasting diets are so the one that we've talked about is a 16 to 8 uh diet right so you eat mm -hmm. for uh an eight hour period and then you're fasting for 16 hours do you know about any other ones have you is a quiz for you have you oh uh what about the 23 one the 22 two i've heard of the 21 three i could just do math all day aren't those all, aren't <laughs> and, those and, all diets? and the reason why the 16 to 8 is is the most popular is because it's actually the most doable but you're right some people uh convert their eating to much, much smaller time frames. You read a lot about those in the lay press. Uh, but the other popular ones are the every other day diet. So one day you eat normally, the next day no more than 500 calories. And there's another one called the five to two diet, where five days a week um, you eat normally, and then the other two days... You binge on fatty, disgusting, deep-fried food. The, I've done that one. <laughs> the opposite. It's like 500 oh. to 600 calories. And, um, and you could, but, but it's a good point, right? You can, those days, uh, you can eat whatever you want. And even the fasting days, you can eat them all at one sitting, right? You can spread them out throughout the day, however, but those ones are, are harder to do. So the question then comes down, Ali, to evidence. What's the evidence for intermittent fasting? And, uh, there's, again, we talked many times about systematic reviews, which are good for looking at all the trials that have been done. One that came out in Canadian Family Physician from last year shows that intermittent fasting, uh, when you compare it to a calorie restrictive diet, which is like we've talked about Weight Watchers or whatever, just decreasing the amount of calories, they found that intermittent fasting was equivalent. Okay. Uh, and when you compare it to no intervention, so just, you know, you go about your daily life, you definitely will lose weight. So it's not to say that an intermittent fasting doesn't make you lose weight. It's just that just restricting your calories would also cause you to lose about the same amount of weight. If someone finds that a useful way to fast, perfect. But there was one much larger study that was done that came out last year as well. Uh, and in that one, they looked at uh, this time-restricted eating. So basically, whether you did the 16 to 8 time-restricted diet or you just ate normally. And they basically found that there was no difference between the groups. And in fact, the group that was doing the intermittent fasting, they actually lost uh, the weight they lost because they did lose weight, but they lost more lean mass from their muscles as opposed right. to from fat. So that is a bit of a concern in terms of that. Sure. Well, th some of these doctors who are aging experts always do talk about the you know, compensating, making sure like two to three days a week you're doing something for your muscles as well. So I, 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 I assume that they're well aware of that too and that that's a downside of, uh, of intermittent fasting. And they also talk about the time of day that may be, may be useful, right? So um, if eating all your meals between noon and 8 p.m., okay, that's one way to do it. That's the way that was done in that big trial. But some people are like, no, actually, you should move it even earlier. It's called circadian rhythm fasting, right? So the time for eating should be between like uh, uh, start at 7 a.m., for example, and then go for eight would, hours forward after that. I would go, I would go, like, that would be the ideal for me, to be quite mm. honest. I would go like 6 a.m. or 7 a.m., I like eating first thing in the morning. I do mm -hmm. like that feeling. So it's like, it feels like deprivation in the morning to, to intermittent fast, but then it doesn't if, you know, I didn't eat after like, let's say six or six 30 at night. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but I'd love to shove a bunch of food in my face late at night. So that's, so, so you're, 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 you're burning the candle at both ends there. It's not good. So I've been doing that my whole life. That's the whole problem. That's why intermittent fasting was a blessing. I was like, what? You don't have to eat right before bed and right when you wake up? This is crazy. I didn't know. No one told me. What will they think of next? So I think that's one important thing is, um, you know, you really want to try and avoid eating at nighttime. I think most people mm -hmm. kind of agree with that. So in yeah. the end, why was there no difference between these two groups in this study that was that was done? And it's basically thought, and a lot of the intermittent fasting experts will say, you know what, uh, it's probably just you're decreasing the amount of calories, right? You're just doing calorie restriction because it's hard to fit in all the meals that you would normally eat plus snacks between in an eight hour period. And so that that's the theory why we don't see a difference between these two groups. 
The only, the last thing I want to tell you is about cancer. So um, there's not, there's a few studies that have been looked, that have been looking at intermittent fasting in, in cancer. And the reason is because we know when they uh, fast cell cells, like cancer cells in the lab, and they don't give them nutrients, the cells die quicker. And so the idea is, could fasting also help uh, with, with cancers? And there's many trials going on right now looking at that. So that, that may be something promising. It's not the treatment, the sole treatment of the cancer, but it's in conjunction with chemotherapy, radiation, surgery, etc. So there's several trials going, going. So we'll have those results hopefully soon in the next couple of years. Um, and I, I think it's promising, but again, we got to be sure because, as you know, people who have cancer, when they're getting chemotherapy especially, uh, ha they have nausea, they don't put on weight very much, and then you don't want them to also be fasting and then right. losing their muscle mass, right? So again, it's yeah. a balance, and this is hopefully going to be examined in those trials. So that that is uh, still to come. Uh, okay, SNL? To be celebrated, at the very least, watch some ske sketches from, you know, over the years. Find some old school sketches and, and celebrate it. And uh, intermittent fasting, you know, go based on, on how you feel. But uh, don't do the... Um, don't do the uh, starting eating at 4 p.m. because the rest of us have to smell your breath from, you know, uh, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. And that's just, that's just me. With masks, masks, man. Masks. Oh, yeah, man. Don't forget. Then you got to smell your own breath, though. Don't so, do that to yourself. Um, and intermittent fasting, you know, if you think it would work for you, give it a try. Like I said, it's not like it doesn't work. It's not like you won't lose weight. You will lose weight, you know. Uh, if you think that it might work for you, you can always give it a try. That's totally fine. So, uh, Ali, before we go, anything to plug? Um, you go to my website, standupali.com. There's a couple of things here and there that, uh, that people could take a look at depending on, um, when this is, you know, the, should, should I do a shout out to the people of Peterborough, Ontario? I'll oh, yes, that's Peterborough, coming Ontario yeah. at a drive-in theater doing stand-up comedy outside. Uh, I think that's June 4th. Uh, I'm, I don't think anybody's ever been more excited to go to Peterborough, Ontario than me. That's a big deal. So, uh, you can, uh, follow us on, uh, social media on Twitter, Instagram, Dr. V Comedian. You can also email us, drvcomedian at gmail.com. We'd love to hear what you guys think about the podcast, any suggestions for improvement, etc. Thanks to everyone for listening. Remember that although I am a doctor, I'm not your doctor. Of course, neither is Ali. We established that at the beginning. Medical issues that we talk about are for your interest and information only. They're not to be considered medical advice. Please consult your medical professional for actual medical advice. We'll see you next time.